before we wrap up here, I actually want to take it back to uh, Muslims of the world. Yes, tell we us need to about, push this book. Tell this us, book is important. Okay, tell us first. Of, tell us about your best, your favorite story. Your favorite story you've ever come across. Okay, so I'll tell you this one story, and this is a story that has to deal with hijab. Are you guys ready for this? Sure. Because this is going to make you feel some type of way. Okay. I'm good. So in 1955, in Syria, there was a family of five, a mother and a father and three daughters, who decided to flee the country, flee Syria, and head to America. Now, the father was, the father was, told the, the wife and the three daughters, listen, I'm going to go to America, I'm going to go to California, I'm going to get everything set up, and then three weeks later, you and the three daughters come meet me in California. So the father flies to California, is getting everything set up. Three weeks pass. The mother takes the three daughters, and they head you know, from Syria to America. Their first flight was from Syria all the way to New York City, where they had a layover. Now, when they landed in New York City, the customs said, Hey, you guys are here new, into, new to America. You need to take all your hijabs off for the green card photo so that you guys can you know, stay in America. So the mother... Being by herself, not really knowing the English language, is nervous and scared. She said, okay, she took the hijab off and took the photo, put it back on. Next oldest daughter did, second oldest daughter did. The third daughter, a 13-year-old girl named Hala Atik, said when it was her turn, hijab is part of my faith, and I don't want to take it off for this photo. And the security, you know, they kind of went back and forth with her, and they said, well, listen, little girl, we'll send you back to Syria if you don't take your hijab off for this photo. And she said, I would rather go back to Syria. And this is a young 13-year-old girl who flew all the way from Syria to New York in a foreign country. They're in a foreign country. You know, I mean, she should be scared. You know, she doesn't know what's going on. She said, I would rather go back to Syria than stay in this country if you guys are going to take my religious, you know, rights away. Security came. Management came. They put her in a back room. They made each older sister go to her separately and talk to her. They had the mother go talk to her. Then the 13-year-old girl said, I don't care who you bring back here. I will not take my hijab off for this green card photo. After two and a half hours passed, the whole security is there, management is there, cops are there. They finally said, hey, little girl, you can keep your hijab on. You can take the photo. And I have the photo. It's a beautiful photo. It's a black and white photo. What the mom- was this again? <clears throat> what was this? What 1955. Wow. Now, the mom is super upset at this time because she's nervous. She's, she's missing her husband. Syria to New York is not an easy flight. And she's like, you're so stubborn. Why don't, you just take, why don't you just listen to me? So they grab their suitcases, and she's like pissed off at her daughter. And they run to their next gate. They miss their flight. So now this family who spent all their money, they're like you know, Syrian refugees. They're now like even more scared and even more worried. And the mom's like, now what do we do? They go to United Airlines. They talk to them. They, they negotiate. They're like, well, we can't do anything. You guys are making it difficult. Finally, they mutually agree that we'll put you on the next flight to California. They get on the next flight. While they're flying to California, the mom is yelling at this 13-year-old girl like the entire time. Like, you're so stubborn. I miss my husband. I'm tired. They land in California, and their husband's, the the father's there, and he's in tears, and he's crying. And he's like, you're alive. You're alive. And he's like, they're like, why wouldn't we be alive? The flight that they were supposed to get on, American Airlines number 191, crashed, killing 295 people. It was the biggest crash in American Airlines history. And the young girl, Hala, 13-year-old Hala, looks up at her whole family and says, hijab saved our life. Wow. wow. She was there in California. I'm having an event on September 8th. Hala was there. Hala's coming. She's now like, you know, an old woman. She still wears hijab. I put this on my platform, Muslims of the World, about a year and a half ago. Over 40 million people ended up reading that story because it went viral. And out of that 40 million, when it went viral... About 10 people converted to Islam because of that story. And about 20 Muslim girls have messaged us and said that they've put on hijab because of the story. Wow. wow. That's that awesome. is probably my favorite, most favorite story. I can't imagine there's anything better that can beat that. Now, let me tell you this. On my September yeah. 8th event, yeah. there's going to be a the picture, black and white picture of her on the screen. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell Hala Atik to stand up. Yeah. And I'm going to tell her that after the story went viral... There was somebody that wanted to meet her, and there was a Hispanic girl in New York City who ended up converting to Islam because of this. And I'm going to tell her to stand up. They're going to be right next to each other. They're going to have no idea who, who one another, each one another uh, is. 
Oh, wow. Yeah. So September 8th is going to be a nice event. That's awesome. I'm only saying this because by the time this is published, it's going to be after yeah. September 8th. So. All right. Well, Jazakal Khar Sajjad for coming on. Um, <clears throat> appreciate uh, the, you know, a lot of the projects you're doing, a lot, a lot of great work. We look so forward much. to like... Certainly collaborate and meet and hook it and link it up again soon. I would say, really, we say hook up. It's like, yeah, you know, I Minder. think you're still thinking about Minder right now. <laughs> 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 but listen, one thing I just asked the people that are listening getting this book, Muslims of the World, on New York Times bestselling list is super important. The book is $13, it's on Amazon. Get on Amazon, type in Muslims of the World, you are, and I'm purchase your right copy. Now. Thank on. you so much, brother. I appreciate well, well, it. How do I look at Amazon yeah, right now? It's on Amazon. You just type in Muslims of the World. That's the way. It's an honor to be part of your guys' podcast. Mm-hmm. You guys are great. And I will promote this for you guys as well. May awesome, Allah put barakah in your work. Thank, Thank you, man. I appreciate it. And yours as well, I mean. Thank you All so right, much. for our special guest, Sajjad Shah from Muslim of the World and Minder, uh, from, our, from our co-hosts, Mort, Sim, and, and my, I'm Mahin. Yeah. Um, also, forgot, forgot the last plugs. All right, guys, YouTube. We're on YouTube now. Subscribe on YouTube. We're on Google Play on, and, on Android. Uh, if you have an iPhone, subscribe on iTunes. Give us a five-star review. We're on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook follow us on those platforms um, and we will inshallah be talking to you guys very soon assalamu alaikum